In this video, I'll show you a way to use Excel to organize your variables when working with problems, in particular with Chapter 7. Although um, the same process you can also use in Chapter 9, and just the idea of organizing concepts and using Excel to calculate them um, can apply anywhere, at work, at school, anywhere at all. Um, so I've got chapter seven's um, questions on the left here from our study guide, and then I have an Excel workbook open on the right. So let's just look at our two problems here. In chapter seven, there's two kinds of sampling distributions you're gonna work with. It's either means, which is just another way of calling an average, or proportion, which is just another way of saying like percentage. So you've dealt with these concepts in your daily lives, we're just having to apply the statistical vocab, right? So means and proportions. So let's look at the first one. Suppose the speed commuters typically drive on the five freeway is normally distributed with a mean of 75 miles per hour and a standard deviation of 10 miles per hour. If 16 commuters are randomly sampled from the population, solve the following. And so in part A, you're gonna be asked to convert specific x values, the 70 miles per hour and the 80 miles per hour into z values. We have to standardize them, right? We have to see how many standard deviations away the numbers 70 and 80 fall from the mean. So where are they on that, um, on that visual here? And then in part B, you'll go ahead and use those z values to find the probability of um, getting a sample mean somewhere in between those two uh, numbers. So it's helpful to pull out the concepts you're going to use. So I'm just gonna type out the concepts here in Excel, and then that'll help us organize and make sure we know where things go into the formula. Okay, so first we have um, our population mean. Um, so that's given to us in the story at 75 miles per hour. So there's my mean of 75, I'll just type in 75. And it is helpful to make sure to know the concept and the Greek letter. So the Greek letter for population mean, and because I can't do the symbols in Excel very easily, I'm just gonna type out the word, but it is mu. So mu is what you call this little u right here in the formula, okay? And then um, the story also gives us the population standard deviation. So I just abbreviate it a little bit. And um, what that symbol looks like, if you look in the formula, it's the sigma. So this little O with kind of like a line on it. So there's my sigma. And that's given to us in the story as 10 miles per hour. Um, you're also given a, a sample size. So how many um, commuters got sampled or got you know monitored for their speed. And that's a little bit easier to type. That's our lowercase n. Okay, and so that's the 16 commuters. And if it's helpful, I mean like to like remember the units of measure, you can always to the right type it in. For me, it's helpful because it's like the story, right? There's my 75 miles per hour, 10 miles per hour, and like 16 commuters. But I do separate the number from like what it is so that if I need to use the number in a calculation, I can, okay? Um, but it's helpful to remember that because then it just contextualizes the problem and we don't mix stuff up. Okay, now uh, we are going to be converting some X bars, so sample means. So the sample means, sample means, um, and you might have one or two. In this case, we've got two of them. That's denoted by the X bar. So I'm going to type it as X bar, but if you look over here, it's that X with a little line over it. And we do have two of them, right? We've got the 70 and the 80 that we need to standardize or convert into a Z value, okay? So all I'm doing is pulling out the information from the problem and organizing it before I do some math. Now, um, I'll go ahead and show you how to do it in parts, because for instance, if you were doing this with a calculator, um, you could do it with an actual calculator on your phone, um, or you could do it in Excel. But it's helpful, again, to understand conceptually to kind of organize stuff. But for instance, the top here, where we take our sample mean minus the population mean, that is known as our sampling error. You learned about that at the very beginning of chapter seven, and all that is is, hey, there's a difference between my sample 
and my population. So let's see how um, how much of a difference and in which direction is it less than, greater than, like a negative or positive. So there's my sampling error. And so according to this formula, I'm going to take the 70 and subtract the population mean. So what I can go ahead and do is I'll just do equals. And you can just type in the numbers or you can even just click on the box. So I'll just do, I'm going to take my 70 minus and then I'll click my 75, right? So that helps me figure out what the sampling error or what the difference is between my sample mean and my population mean. And that is what goes on top of the formula here. Um, and then I can do the same thing for my 80, um, right? So I'll do equals, I'll take my 80 minus my population mean of 75. And so that's my sampling error for each of my x you know, values up on top. What I also need to find is my standard error, right? This is why it's so important that we understand these concepts and know what they mean. Otherwise, the math won't make sense. And that standard error, that's the bottom part of the formula here, right? That's the standard deviation within our sampling distribution. And it always has two pieces to it. There's the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And again, you can do this in a calculator but I'll just show you how to do it with Excel so you can see the, you know, the calculation itself is still the same. So I'll do equals. And so I got to take my population standard deviation. And you can always type this. That's my 10, right? I can always type in 10 or I can just click on the 10. Either way works, whatever you're comfortable with. And then I'll do divide. And then in order to do the square root of n, I'm going to type in SQRT. That's the abbreviation for square root, parentheses, and my n is the 16 commuters. So again, I can type that in or I can click on it, right? And then close parentheses. And then go ahead and hit enter. So uh, the 2.5 here is the bottom of this formula, right? So I've got my tops, then now I've got my bottom because it's gonna be the same uh, both ways. So I can leave this alone, I'm good. Now in order to get my z values, I will go ahead and do a little bit of dividing. So um, to convert my 70 into a Z value, I will um, take the sampling error that I found, right? That was the 70 minus 75. That's the top here. And then I divide it by my standard error. So I do divide. We already found the standard error. So I just click on this and hit enter. So that right here is my Z value and I'll make a little note just underneath so I don't forget, right? That's that's how many standard deviations away from the mean, the middle, that 70, mi 70 miles per hour is. Then I got to do the same thing with my 80. So I'll take my um, equal sign. Uh, I'll take my sampling error for 80. So that was the 80 miles per hour minus 75. Then divide it by the standard error, right? We already found that. That was just the, the bottom here. And then I'll go ahead and hit enter. And so 80 miles per hour is two standard deviations to the right, so it's positive, of um, my mean. So there's my 80 miles per hour, just so we're, we're aware, okay? So that's one way that you can use Excel to organize your numbers. And the nice thing about this, especially if you, like me, were like clicking on boxes, you could then just like, change out numbers and everything automatically updates you, you do have to be very careful that you're not using old numbers but if you've got a new problem and you're just plugging things in you can quickly change it like maybe our our um, sample size is going to change what what happens if we sampled 30 people or 20 people right so i can change that 16 to 20 and then all my other numbers get updated i'm going to undo that or maybe I'm going to change my standard deviation. Like what if the standard deviation was 9, right? I can plug in 9 instead of 10. And again, it updates everything down below as long as you kind of set it up um, correctly. So that's just one way to organize. But I like it this way too because then I can see all my parts. Um, I, again, describe stats like cooking. It's like putting all my ingredients out on the counter like next to each other, kind of organized, so that when I start to cook and put things together, it's easy to grab and I don't grab the wrong thing, right? And so um, that's how I would do uh, organizing for sampling distributions of the mean.
Let's go ahead and do the um, same thing, but now we're going to do sampling distributions for proportions. So the same idea comes here where we're just pulling stuff out of the story, right? So I'm just going to scroll down so the numbers above don't like confuse us. But say um, I need to know my population proportion, right? So that's going to be my P. I also need to know my sample proportion. Um, so that's P bar. And um, if it's not given to you, you might have to do a little bit of math. So sometimes the P bar um, has to be calculated, and that's just our X over N formula. So I'm just making a note of that. Um, you do need to know your sample size. Sample size, there's my N. Um, let's look at the story. So the proportion of Georgia peaches that get damaged during shipping is thought to be 0 0.10. To check this, a random sample of 100 peaches is selected and 16 peaches are found to be damaged. What is the probability of having 16 or more damaged peaches in the sample? So let's make sure to find our parts, right? The proportion that we think is damaged according to the story. And the way it's written, it implies population. It doesn't say population, but because it says of Georgia peaches. So that's like of all the Georgia peaches. So I'll go ahead and type in 0 0.10. Okay. And then for the sample proportion, um, as soon as you hear sample proportion uh, or the P bar, look to see what sampling information you have. In this case, we know there's a random sample of 100 peaches. That's my N. So I can put my 100 right here, right? And um, of that, I examined or inspected six, um, all of them and found that 16 were damaged. But what does that sample proportion look like, right? So there's my X over N. So X is the thing that I'm interested, that I found. So that's my 16 and my N is the 100. So that's what I'll do. Um, 16 divided by 100 and that'll be my p bar so you can break it out even further like so that you know you can see it easier but you can always put like my x um was the 16 peaches so i don't forget right and then that way you can always when you're you're typing here you know you're doing yeah there's my 16 divided by my 100 my n over here so if that's helpful you can always you know just put more notes for yourself and organize all your pieces of information Okay, so similar to above, right? We have to find the sampling error and the standard error. So specifically, we want to know the sampling error for um, our P bar minus P. So if you forget, you can look at the formula, P bar minus P. So it's always the sample first. What's the difference between my sample and my population? So we'll go ahead and do equals. And my sample proportion of my p-bar was the 0.16 minus my population proportion, or the p. That's just right above it. Um, and then I'll go ahead and hit enter. And so my sampling error, or my, the difference between my sample and my population is 0 0.06. Then for the standard error, again, all that means it's the standard deviation in our sa sampling distribution. And that's whatever is in the denominator down here. So um, the standard error term applies in both means and proportions. They just look different, right? So in, when you're working with means, it looks like this. And when you're working with proportions, it looks like this. So just think, if you see a P anywhere, you're doing proportions. Um, so let's go ahead and plug in this or set up this formula. So I'm going to do equals. You'll notice there's a square root over the whole thing. So I'm going to do SQRT parentheses. And now I'm going to be working with um, my population proportion, my P, and my N. So I just want to be really careful about my typing, right? So um, my P was the first one times. So I'm going to do shift eight to get the little asterisk. And then um, just to, so that you can see the process, the parentheses, one minus and then my P again, so I'm just clicking on that again. Close parentheses, uh, and then I'm gonna divide by, see the little divide sign, my N of 100. So there's my 100, and then close my parentheses so that everything is like, like a sandwich, right? You wanna, you wanna close both ends of the sandwich. And then whenever you're ready, you can hit Enter, and that will be your standard error. We're not done though, because we have to divide these two numbers according to the formula. We've got to take our sampling error divided by our standard error. So in order to get the z value, uh, and let me just move these over 
just so they're closer. Like I like formatting. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and say, I need to take my sampling error, that's the top here, and divide that by my standard error. So that's the bottom over here. So I'm just gonna divide those two numbers and hit enter. This right here is saying that um, the sample proportion of uh, 0 0.16, the one over here, um, of damaged peaches is two standard deviations to the right. It's positive, it's on the right side. Um, and then from there, you know, you can plug in to the appropriate norm.s.dist formulas to find the probability. Well, so what, what is that area of the probability for, you know, this particular z-value or when we were above like that particular z-value? Okay, so I just wanted to show you how you can use Excel to organize your math, um, but not everyone likes this process, so do what makes sense for you. This is just one way I do it. And again, I like it because that way, if I need to change an answer, use it for another problem, you know, 50, like I can plug in different things from different stories, but I gotta make sure not to mix up old numbers um, with the new numbers, and that can save me some time. So, you know, in a way, you're, you're setting up those formulas to kind of automate. So you just have to plug in stuff and everything updates. So if you have any questions, just let me know.